Lord, we thank you for life. We thank you for the space that you have given us this week as we begin our week. Everlasting God, we are committing ourselves to you. We are committing our families to you, O oh God. And we are saying that, Lord, lead us and guide us and help us to be exactly that what you have intended for each one of us. So we give you praise in Jesus' name, we pray. Welcome for this week's prayer. And to begin today, uh, we look at the book of John, chapter 15, and you're going to look at five verses. And this is where Jesus says, I am the true fine. And from verse one, the Bible says, I am the true vine, and my father is the farmer. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already pruned clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Right here we see, and in the book of John, there are seven I am. Jesus is beginning here by saying the first I am is that I am the true vine. And then he says, and my father is the farmer or the fine dresser, another uh, fashion would say. That means he's already saying as the son in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, he's saying he is the, the true vine and the father is the gardener. And for that reason, he brings another thing. So he says, every branch that does not bear fruit, the father prunes it so that it may bear fruit. I want to talk about one, abiding in the vine. It means that a tree will only bear its own kind. And because Christ is saying he's the vine and the father is the gardener, that means he submitted to the father and us, the vine, the father can prune it in the way he sees best so that the vine can bear more fruit. So Jesus already here is saying there is a core relationship. There is a subjection of his life to the father and therefore so that he can walk in the ways of the father. And what do we learn for, for us today? When Jesus is saying he's the true vine, we now who are his followers, therefore ought to bear the same fruit that Jesus would want us to bear. We are subjected to Christ, even as Christ subjects himself to the Father. And then he says, you already pruned clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Meaning the way to get right, the way to bear the right fruit, the way to be in the will of the Father, the way to remain in the vine is through the word, the word that God, Jesus speaks to us. And he says that that is what will keep us abiding in him. That is what will help us to bear fruit. That's what will help us to remain in him. And in verse four, he says, remain in me and I in you. Meaning we cannot bear fruit if you are not in Christ. So we have to remain in him. So the second thing, that remaining, another fashion we say abiding. So we have seen the first thing is where we are abiding in him, we are remaining in him. And the second thing we have seen is that we get pruned to be of the nature, to be of the kind. And the father is the pruner. He says, remain in me and I in you. As a branch can't bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine. So neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who remains in me and I in him, the same bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. I love this, the I am. And as we speak about Christ saying, I am the vine, we are saying that he is saying that if we remain in him, if we abide in him, 
then we'll be able to bear much fruit. And already he brought the aspect of the father who prunes, who takes care of the garden. So God the Father takes care of the garden to ensure that we who are in Christ are bearing fruit. And maybe we will be asking which fruits are those we are bearing. In the book of Galatians, the Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit because he's saying we can bear no fruit unless we are with him. And if we are in Christ, then we'll bear the fruit that is in accordance to the will of the Father. You can think about joy, you can think about kindness, you can think about patience, you can think about long suffering, those fruits of the Spirit, if we remain in him. This week I pray that we will continue to allow God to prune us. Pruning sometimes may be painful, but it is for our good so that we can bear much fruit and that you and I will abide in Christ. And he says, if we abide in him and he abides in us, then he will help us. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus name, we thank you that you are the I am. And this reminds us of when Moses was wondering and asking God, what will I go and tell, tell Pharaoh who has sent me? What will I go and tell the children of Israel? And God, you told Moses to say, I am who I am. Go and say the I am sent me. And in this space, Lord, now we are fighting Jesus Christ saying he is the true fine. Want to thank you because in you there is life. And Father, this week, we surrender ourselves as the followers of Jesus Christ to your will and to your way. Father God, you are the fine dresser. Would you dress us, oh God? Help us to remove, help us to say no, help us to abide in you. And by abiding in you, we'll keep off from those things that will cause us not to bear much fruit, from things that will not please you, oh God. For Jesus Christ to abide in us, he wants us to have a total surrender. Father, I am praying that we, your followers, we totally surrender to your will and to your way. You already say that your word is the one that cleanses us. And I pray that your word will continue to speak into our lives. When we abide in you, when we remain in you, you, the Lord Jesus Christ, will cause us to remain in you. And when the Father dresses us, he will make sure that we are bearing the fruits that will be pleasing to him. Lord, I am praying that this week, each one of us will bear fruit. I'm praying for the church of Jesus Christ, that this week will bear fruits, fruits that will bring you honor, fruits that will bring you glory, fruits that will speak the love of Christ in the space where you have set us. Lord, that we can be long suffering, that we can express love, that we can be peaceful and peaceable people, that we can be people that can help others to understand the love of God and that we can allow people to come and receive the, the love of God from what will be flowing from within us. Father, we also want to thank you because you tell us that we'll bear much fruit. We desire that this week we be a representation of Jesus Christ in every space. Cause our spirit and our hearts to know Cause us to know that we are the, the Bible that many other people will lead. Cause us to know that we are the followers of Jesus Christ that people will look upon to, to see what it means to follow Christ. Cause us to speak your word in power. Cause us to act it out with grace. Cause us to follow you in ways that will draw many to yourself. We thank you for this week, oh God. And I want us to take this opportunity also to pray for the candidates as they continue to do their exam. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for our children who are in different and various levels of their schooling. And as they sit for their exam this week, we are thanking you because you've already gone ahead. You have helped them to learn. Thank you for the understanding that you give them. Thank you, Lord, that they will not be anxious in every way. We are committing them into your hearts that, Father, they will be at peace. As they go through every paper, they will not be anxious and they will not worry. Lord, we pray that you will bring remembrance into their heart. 
And more than anything, we want to pray that the peace of God shall reign upon them and shall help them to remain calm in every way. Lord, that they will not be anxious of anything because they are trusting in you. And we want to thank you for their caregivers, thank you for the infrigerators, for their teachers, for the whole school administration as they ensure that they're having a proper environment to do their exam. Thank you for the encouragement that you have already given their way. And we want to thank you for their victory is in your hands. And we want to thank you because you will grant it to them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for joining us. Now that we know that Christ is the true vine, let's continue abiding and let's allow the word of God to continue to wash, to cleanse us and to lead us in the ways of the Lord. Have a great week. May the Lord bless you. We love you. Great